This is a 1970 Chevelle, and I'm gonna take it for a quick spin and um, show you around the car. I'll go ahead and apologize in advance because this is probably gonna be a long video. There's so many, uh, so many things to take a look at on this car. Let me turn the uh, volume on the stereo down. said be patient with me I'm, I was gonna stop there and usually that church is empty but this guy wants to talk and I don't want that in my video so take it for a little longer drive Owner, 
said according to the VIN number and body tag, there's nothing to me that says that it's not an SS. In other words, it is a V8 vehicle. It's got all the right numbers that would have lined up with it being an SS, so it is possible. I'm really sorry that I'm running so long in this video. Typically, I try to keep them to 10 minutes, and I don't, uh, I don't typically drive them this long. So needless to say, this car attracts a lot of attention. I couldn't even barely get the video started. Uh, I had a guy in the neighborhood wanting to pull me over and talk. And then I pull up in that church that's usually empty and that guy gets out of his car. He wants to talk everywhere you go. Um, if, you like, if you don't like uh, talking to strangers, don't buy this car. If you don't like being photographed, don't buy this car. Everywhere I go, somebody wants to grab their phone, take a picture. Needless to say, the car hauls ass. It's pushing over 525 horsepower. With that 700 R4, you've got the overdrive so you can cruise. not familiar with driving a car like this you really want to be careful while you get used to it um, Aussie traction rear end you stomp on it it's gonna slide out from under you you really want to be pointed in a straight direction uh, I feel bad I, again I apologize for the length of this video I'm gonna pull into this church parking lot and pray that no one bothers me for a minute while I finish off this video all right, looks good. Power steering, of course, is a beautiful option. Very easy to drive. Pull in here and stop and show you the car. Absolutely beautiful, two and a half inch all the way back. Magnaflow exhaust. turn the car off it'll be a lot easier to hear because I narrate the rest of this video hang in there with me so it does have a um, automatic fans system in here with a four core uh, flex of light radiator take a second and that'll turn off just because I've run so long already um, I may I may miss a couple of things. Just give me a little bit of grace. I promise I'm going to try to do my best to show you this car. Uh, one of the things I didn't show you while I was driving it is the heat is hot and the air conditioning is ice cold. Um, we just actually put it. It was uh, not blowing cold when I got the car. We put it on a vacuum yesterday. Let it sit for a while. It is there's no leaks in the system. Charged recharged it. And uh, actually, because it was like 55 degrees yesterday here in Georgia, the AC was blowing about 37 degrees. I turn the lights on so you can see that they are on. Turn signals, of course, work. I mean, everything on this car works, obviously. <clears throat> so here's the beautiful thing about this car. The beautiful thing about this car is that for $65,000, you can buy this exact same car and it's mint. It's perfect. It has zero flaws whatsoever. But for half the price, you can buy this car for half the price and it's got a few little flaws. And you know what? You take your time, you buff those flaws out, I'm telling you, this car has very, very minimal flaws. So I want to walk around and show you, though. I do have a little crow foot right here, and I'm going to try and get right up on it. So you can see that's about the size of my fingernail there. Got something on my finger. Okay. So walk around the car. So this, so I want to just be quick to say the body is arrow straight. Okay, here's another spot here. A little ding. 
maybe a truck door opened up on it or something in the garage and it's really really hard to see you're not going to probably see that in the camera okay so there's a tiny little ding there the top is flawless and just like i said i want to go around and point out every single thing that i know got a two tiny itty bitty bubbles in the paint right here they're not they don't look like rust they look like humidity those two itty bitty not even the size of a pea continue on around this is the worst spot i think besides maybe that spot on the hood there's a little check there from a like a rock chip or something and there's uh oh i thought that was one but that's just a spider <laughs> okay when you go to open and close the doors you'll see that you know from working on the car and opening and stuff just along the edge of the door here there's a spot there a spot there where the paint's been rubbed off a little spot inside the door in the door jam tiny little so these are the little things that you know i would say make this what i would call a very nice driver quality vehicle lights work brights work i think i've got the brights on now chrome in the front and rear is all brand new really i think all almost all the chrome is either in excellent original condition or was replaced with brand new it's got the ss 454 badging on the side which is beautiful brand new boss um, wheels with the 18s on the front and 20s on the rear wrapped in brand new rubber his tires probably have i don't think that this build has more than about 2,000 miles on it the odometer is actually so, showing 646 so that would be since it's been programmed and everything the interior has all been redone beautiful door panels and the thing that i really love about this is i love a pro touring vehicle that's been kept mostly lo original looking and i think that you know this has got all the extra electronic goodies but to me i'm just a bit of a purist and um, i really really like original styling that being said fresh brand new upholstery push the button on the back of the seat and the, and the seat folds forward beautiful upholstery here's another nice thing back on the back you've got the rear you've got the rear panel and you'll notice those perforated holes it's actually got i believe a kenwood or a pioneer uh, speak um, amplifier in the back with boston acoustic speakers and boston acoustic speakers up here in the front that have been hidden in the uh in, you know underneath the dash so the stereo sounds really good this was top of the line probably five years ago it's got an ipod connect it is the older ipod connect here so you either get an adapter or get your stereo guy to rerun the wire um, so a few little things I want to show you here. This car um, was built by a guy who lived in um, the urban areas in Atlanta. He really, security was an, of the utmost to him. So it's got an alarm system on it. So if I push this, you hear it beep. Okay, so it's got an alarm system on an Excalibur. It's also got this digital fob. The car will not start without it. It goes here in the center console, you slide it in, and that makes the car turn on electronic ignition push the button once and you'll see it come alive push the button again and hold it for about two seconds one two the car fire dry it up got it. everything all digital um, the buttons for the dash are actually located here so when you push if you can see there's two little buttons there one there and one on this side you push those buttons that changes things on the dashboard changes the readout for example push one so your trip odometer is your zero to 60 if you want to put it on that your high speed it's actually even got a quarter mile um, timer and your quarter mile top speed so I think that's just a really cool thing you switch over to this one and it'll show you park how many hours the engine's been running your high rpm so that was while i was driving it i got up to 4,030 rpm and then what gear are you in i'm in park stereo so got some old school jams in here everything working just trying to show it Stereo works. Let's 
hear the um, heater come on. So we'll put this on high. So I love this is a vintage air. We'll turn the AC on here. The compressor kick in. Did you hear the compressor beginning? See the little blue light come on. Give it a second. And there we go. We got cold air conditioning. One of the things that I really appreciate is uh, the guy who built this car had class, he had taste, everything was tastefully done. Um, you've got this, uh, you know, nice center console that's original style. Um, I love the fact that the vintage air unit is original styling um, and it was installed correctly so your vents all work. Got this extra vent down below. The wipers of course work. You've got billet aluminum and chrome everywhere. The only thing actually that's electronic that does not work on this car is the horn. And I'll tell you what, I've had tons of cars and all of the freaking horns never work. You know, little custom, you know, SS454, brand new floor mats, all brand new carpet, brand new headliner. We did have to replace the key in the trunk. Um, the previous owner did lose the key to the trunk. So open up the trunk and notice like I said, beautiful. Now this is not show quality condition and we're looking at this 1970 Chevelle. So a lot of guys are comparing this to something they saw in Barrett Jackson or Mecham that went for $65,000, 70000 This is a car, this is a, this is a 35 to $50,000 car depending on the day, the bidder, you know. I really think if this falls probably right in the forty dollars to $45,000 range as far as what it would appraise for. Beautiful rust-free trunk pan. And like I said, if I hadn't gone, uh, if I hadn't gone seven or eight minutes driving it, we wouldn't be so deep into this, uh, into this, um, this video. But so, MagnaFlow exhaust underneath, dual exhaust. Of course, there's zero rust. Floor pans appear to have been replaced, as well as the rear quarters possibly. Can't tell for sure. They did a fantastic job. This one, you can tell that these these floor pans look like they've been replaced. Nice, clean, and detailed. Beautiful, fat exhaust with an X pipe. I mean, this is done right. Long tube headman headers. And like I said, there's no rust on this car that I've seen. I take that back. Actually, I did find one rust spot, and I think it's just something that they must have missed when they were doing the restoration, and that is in the back, um, underneath the rear window where the stereo tray is in um, is a small spot of rust, maybe the size of my thumb. It's the only rust I've seen on the car. Back here, you've got a brand new fuel tank that's been put in. Nice, beautiful detailing. SSBC disc brakes on the rear and front. Those are power disc brakes. Here's your underneath. Nice clean rockers, frame rails, floor pans. I don't see any bubbling under the paint. I don't see any weird, you know, any any, any notion of, of anything being hidden, covered up by, by uh, you know, body filler or Bondo or anything like that. I think the gentleman who built this car really went the extra mile to try to make sure that everything was done like it was supposed to be done. And you can really tell the craftsmanship, and the detail, attention to de every detail. Beautiful engine detail. Obviously, MSD ignition, you know, this has got everything you'd want. 
And keep in mind, all these bits and pieces are expensive. You got the Holley Performance double pumper. Even just this setup right here. That's not a cheap setup. You know, billet aluminum, everything. Nice expensive battery, you know, just like, just down to the details. It's kind of funny, the only thing that doesn't work is the horn. So there you have it. I've never done a 20 minute video, um, but I hope that this is thorough. I know whoever's buying this is spending a lot of money. Um, I've only sold probably six or seven um, $40,000 plus vehicles in my um, classic car career, uh, selling career. And so uh, this will get to be one of them, hopefully. Um, had a couple of Mustang Fastbacks and some high dollar Camaros. Um, I had a 50 Mercury actually. It was one of my high dollar cars, the 64 Impala, owned by an NFL football player. And actually one of the cool things about this, uh, I'm not gonna mention any names, but uh, this was built by a uh, Georgia Tech football player here in the Atlanta area who went on to play NFL. Um, so every once in a while we luck out and get one like this in. This is a gorgeous driver, 1970 Chevelle SS and uh, it's peachtreeclassiccars.com and you just can't go wrong spending a little bit less money and getting this much car than spending more at the auction and never wanting to drive it because you spent too much this is a this car deserves to be driven um, on a regular basis